This is a technique called dabari. It's the most difficult step out of hundreds in making wagasa or traditional Japanese umbrellas. If the paper is misaligned by even a fraction, the umbrella can't be sold. While functional, these umbrellas are considered works of art and can sell for $300 to $3,000. And though Kotaro Nishibori learned the craft relatively late in life, he is one of the few craftspeople who can make wagasa from start to finish. Nishibari stays true to the 1,200-year-old process of making wagasa, and it's through this art form that he reconnected to his Japanese heritage. Creating wagasa begins with sourcing all-natural bamboo. Nishibari works with various bamboo craftspeople who sand it down and then cut it into thin sticks. Once the bamboo is prepared, Nishibori sews the bamboo sticks to a wooden core called a tomoto rokuro. This creates the basic framework. Each stick of bamboo or bone is about two to three millimeters thick. The number of bones he uses varies by wagasa type. This type is called a bengasa. It needs 48 bones connected to the core. Next, he begins connecting the bones to each other with a needle and thread. This has always been a crucial step. If the bones aren't evenly spaced out, the umbrella may not open and close, or the umbrella could rip after only a few uses. The umbrella has 1,000 histories. Craftsmen at ERA, they are really looking for the, what is the best shape, what is the, the most efficient way to create the best perfect shape. If we find the, the process is really great, we don't feel we need, it's necessary to change. We just follow the traditional techniques. Nishibori first makes a tapioca paste that he will use as glue. This is followed by the step that requires the most precision. So you must place exact position by hand and on one time because there is a glue on the frame. If the washi has to be moved around, the glue will stay on it and be visible in the final product. And Nishibori's shop won't be able to sell it. You must find the, the right position and one time and uh, no mistake. Once he places the paper, he uses a razor to trim the excess washi so there's no overlapping on the umbrella. He repeats this on each panel of the umbrella frame. When he is done placing the last piece of washi on the umbrella, the glue needs to dry overnight. The next day it is shaped allowing the umbrella to open and close fluidly. So we have a special technique to, to fold the, the paper because the, the paper should fold into the wagasa sticks. Western umbrella is we just overlap uh, the sticks, but in Japanese wagasa we fold into the umbrella itself and twist it and anyway to fold it. Nishibori wraps more washi paper around the top of the umbrella also known as the potter's wheel. But instead of gluing it, he holds the paper in place with only water. Usually in Japan, wagasa is touched by many artisans, and each one is skilled in a specific step. The art form is also passed down in a family from one generation to the next. But just like Nishibori strayed from the norm by learning to do each part of the process, his road to becoming a Wagasa craftsman was also unconventional. Nishibori grew up in Japan, but as a kid was exposed to other people and cultures. My father uh, was the, the owner of a, a private English school in my local hometown. So I was kind of a little familiar with the uh, English and some foreigner who stayed in my uh, hometown. And that makes me somehow interested in more like outside of Japan. After finishing high school in Japan, Nishibori moved to Canada. Being in Canada, that was the first moment. Actually, I feel a little bit shame about it because many of my friends is asking me about Japanese culture or Japanese history, but I didn't know about that because I didn't study about Japanese history too deep. I am Japanese, but I don't know about Japan. After two years in Canada, Nishibori decided to return home to Japan. That's when he met his wife, whose family owned Hiyoshia, 
a Wagasa shop that had been running since the 1850s. Through his connection to his wife's family, Nishibori learned the thousand-year-old way of making Wagasa, and eventually took over running the family business. So somehow it's connected to me. This is something that I was looking for, and this is something really valued. Uh, Japanese cultures. One of the final steps includes painting the umbrella with a coat of linseed oil to make it water repellent. Before final decorative touches, the umbrellas are set out to dry for at least two weeks. Now, Hiyoshia has a global customer base, meaning Nishibori can share his Japanese culture with the world. After 25 years, he's become a teacher to his staff, but he's still learning the art form. In Japanese uh, craft world, nobody say I'm master. Uh, master cannot be rich <laughs> even if you stay all your life. Master is something like a you know, symbolic item. So. But I can say I, I am I can say I am craftsman, professional craftsman. 